Looking dumbfounded. Yes, Pom Pom's talking to you. Himiko told Pom Pom about your situation. Now listen up. Pom Pom will only say this once. Pom Pom's sure there have been lots of people telling you how special you are lately. But this is the Astral Express, and everyone on here has their secrets. Since you chose to board, you can abide by the rules. You're not the only special one here. You'd best remember that. I'm Pom Pom, the conductor. Just come find me if you have any trouble. Oh, it's you. How do you feel? I'll check you out in a minute. In any case, I have to thank you for saving March. <laughs> All I did was calm that thing inside you down temporarily. I don't want to frighten you, but the truth is you won't ever be in the clear while it's still inside your body. However, as long as the Stellaron is still in your body, you should be careful what you do. I don't know if Himiko and I can suppress it again. But I won't bore you any longer. So much happened at the space station, you must be tired. There should be some time until the next warp jump, so feel free to walk around and familiarize yourself with the environment. But I won't bore you any longer. There should be some time until the next warp jump, so... What do you think? Does the Astral Express look the same as you imagined? Everyone on the Express is a passenger. We're all heading towards an unknown destination. Like we're traveling together. Maybe that's why the Trailblaze chose such a look. Oh, right. March and Don Hung should both be in their rooms right now. You can go look for them. You youngsters should get along well. Oh, you know young people. Their rooms always reflect their personality. You can go and have a look around. Also, don't mind Pom Pom's antics. They're actually pretty interested in you. It's just that we haven't had new passengers on the Express for... A long while. All right, I won't steal Pom Pom's thunder. If you have any questions, just go ask our conductor. Himiko likes using the phonograph a lot. She says it can play melodies from the past. Welt likes collecting these jet black discs. It seems like they could be antiques. He'd be very happy if you could bring a few back. Thank <laughs> you. 
here already? Hmm. I was just engaging in pleasantries. How can I help? Oh? Why are you interested in her room? Ah, Pom Pom remembers Himiko saying that you saved her. Mmm, very brave. Very foolhardy. But that is what a trailblazer should be like. March 7th's room is in the express sleeper compartment. She's always running around, so she might not be there. Don Hong's room? Oh, you mean the archives. Ah, uh, he's just sort of living in there, I guess. I can't be bothered getting him out. March 7th's room is right next to the archives. You can visit him on the way. You recognize this as well? Uh, Himako always likes to bring back weird junk and try to fix it. That also got modified a bit. Pom Pom still needs to prepare for the Express's warp jump. You can look around the place yourself. No matter where you go on this train, Pom Pom will always have my eyes on you. There seems to be the sound of electronic equipment. Hmm. Who's there? Ah, oh, it's you. The door is not locked. Come in. Feel free. This is open to everyone on the Express. While many of the roads that Akivili traveled along no longer exist, I think it's still meaningful to record our adventures as current passengers of the Express. I enter the collected data into the Archives data bank. I try to catalog the people and places the Express encounters, and compare and contrast them with the existing records. Do you see the terminal over there? It can be used to view information already stored in the data bank. Do give it a go.
the door is unlocked. Should I go in? Just one look should be fine, right? Make a choice I won't regret. Reach the future. So much has happened in such a short time. Took long enough, but at least everyone's here now. He won't be here, so just leave him be. Oh yeah, take these. A tiny bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. for the jump. a warp jump too, but I'm used to it now. Don't worry, you'll get used to it too. And before you know it, you'll be a mature and dependable passenger just like me. The first step is to grab a hold of the root cause of your anxiety. Well, it is a little abstract, but basically you just need to pinpoint what's bothering you. The second step is to focus all your anxiety on that point. This is science! Don't get distracted! <sighs> Focus. Now for step three. Yank out that anxiety and cast it away with all your might! That doesn't mean it won't work. The best method for relieving anxiety is the one that works, right? What's wrong? <laughs> you look like you were about to say something. Oh, I think I know what you're going to ask. You've come to the right person. Ooh, you want to know more about the Express? I'm glad. After all, it's an important companion of ours. The Astral Express was a tool created by Akivili the Trailblaze, who used it to transport themselves and the Nameless across the galaxy. 
It is rumored that there are other vehicles like it, but the Express has no such records. When I found the Express, its memory had been severely damaged, with much of its valuable information lost. All I know is that the Express is an aspect of creation built by Akivili themselves and used to travel the cosmos. As for how it was built and how it was damaged, I do not have an answer. The Express is traveling on a route that the Trailblaze once embarked on. The names of some destinations have been lost, but the first and final stops were both at Pagana, Akivili's homeworld. We speculate the Astral Express started its journey from Pagana, stopping at each destination along the way before returning there for its next journey. However, the appearance of the Stellaron has caused a delay at each stop. There's a legend in the galaxy. The heart of Akivili themselves lies in the core of the Astral Express, providing it with the power to travel between worlds. But I found no evidence of that aboard the Express. Besides, the Express existed before the Trailblaze fell. There's no way they could have had two hearts, right? However, it is likely that the Express possesses some sort of mechanism to transfer power from the Trailblaze. It wouldn't be possible with a normal Path Strider. The Fallen Eon, Deceased Trailblaze. Their passing is still a mystery, but of all the known eons, Akivili was the closest to mankind. In the data bank aboard the Express, it is recorded that they walked among the mortals, adventuring, fighting, and celebrating with them. Although they were an eon restrained by the Prima Mobile, Akivili enjoyed a freedom similar to us mortals. They were different from most, but their passing came so suddenly that it was thought they were killed by another eon. I don't believe that to be the case. <laughs> the galaxy is endlessly vast. I wouldn't know where to begin, especially when you ask me like that so suddenly. I've been to many different worlds, yet I still know very little about the galaxy, simply because it's too vast. As for its nature, there are a few theories that I can share with you. The most popular is probably the Cosmos Tree Theory, proposed by Xandar, emanator of erudition and the first member of the Genius Society. He compared the galaxy to an enormous imaginary tree, with its leaves being individual universes, Therefore, only eons who draw their energy from the imaginary and emanators who are blessed by eons can travel through the spaces filled with imaginary energy. That's why planets where civilizations exist are so similar. However, the theory has its flaws. Elias Salas, the 56th member of the Genius Society, invented remote detection, disproving that the imaginary is unique. This shook the foundation of the cosmos tree theory. There are other theories as well. The stretching theory, the heat torch theory, and the parallel imaging theory. The Riddlers claim the galaxy is just a dream, and IX's followers seem to like that claim. Eons are the most mysterious beings in the galaxy. All we know is that they ascended from the form of intelligent beings. As for the how and why, even the geniuses over at the Genius Society haven't the slightest clue. Upon ascending to Eonhood, that being gains power over the paths, 
free to choose the allocation of imaginary energy however they wish, while suffering the restrictions of the Prima Mobile. The Eon of Destruction seeks only to destroy the universe, while the Eon of Erudition wants to find the answer for all that exists. Meanwhile, the Eon of Preservation continues to forge walls, and the Eon of Enigmata devotes itself to obscuring all that is known. A cloud of mystery shrouds the eons. I heard Madame Herta recruited a team to try and solve the mysteries about them. Compared to the eons, the factions are much easier to understand. Mortals with the same objective gather together to practice their understanding of eons and paths. Many eons are unreachable, but the factions are close to us. After Akivili trailblazed across the galaxy, people became aware of the existence of other worlds. Gradually, more people started trying to use the power of the eons to travel between worlds. The Interastral Peace Corporation is a good example. They worship Klopoth, the Eon of Preservation, but somehow became the largest economic entity in the galaxy. Another example is the Genius Society. There are no shortages of eccentrics like Madame Herda who dedicate themselves to scientific research under the protection of the erudition. These factions possess the same power as us to voyage between worlds. It would be hard to travel through the galaxy without them. The birth of an eon gives rise to a path. The nature of the paths remains a mystery, leaving us to draw an analogy in a way that mortals can understand. It's a philosophical concept of sorts. A person is considered to be on a path when their will overlaps with that path. If the person has a strong enough will, they can draw power from that path. Those who can do so are called path striders. Path striders possess extraordinary power, but are still insignificant compared to the eons, like a drop of water in a vast ocean. Sometimes eons will bestow a mortal with their power, making them an emanator of that eon. I should mention that once a path is open, it cannot be closed, even with the fall of its eon. That is how we are still able to travel across the stars, despite Akivili's passing. Trailblaze is our mission, and the source of strength that powers the Express to travel across the galaxy. Explore the unknown world to continue our journey ahead. Understand the local culture and immerse ourselves within it. Establish a connection with the new world. Rejoice with it and share in its fears. Connect worlds together, carving an endless path. This is your first time experiencing the warp jump, so a little discomfort is unavoidable. If you're really anxious about it, I can stay here and have a chat with you. About everyone on the Express? Uh, who would you like to know about? <laughs> She's the owner of the Express. We joke around calling Pom Pom the conductor, but everyone knows Himiko is the boss. It all started with her encounter with the Astral Express, and they haven't been apart since then. She's extremely passionate, like a, a burning sun. However, she remains mysterious most of the time. Once in a while, you feel that she's burning herself out trying to accomplish her dream. 
Only someone like her is worthy of the Astral Express. I think Himiko's vision of her whole life revolves around uh, a very important dream. To be honest, I don't know when Pom Pom appeared. Uh, I think it was before I came to the Express. No, wait, maybe it was after. Pom Pom is like the spirit of the Astral Express. Whenever anyone on the Express needs help, they will appear immediately. It would be ill-advised to underestimate them. Pom Pom is terrifying when they get angry. Yes, it's terrifying. Dan Hung is a lonely child. He may appear distant and cold, but his heart is kind. Perhaps he's the way he is today because he spent so much time on the run. Sometimes he reminds me of myself when I was young. He used to work at the Xianzhou. We don't know what he's running from. He once told me that he didn't know either. All he knew was that something was chasing him and that he had to run. So he boarded the ship of a troop called the Morning Actors and escaped the IPC. After a while, he made his way to the Express and he's stayed here longer than anywhere else. Don't worry. No matter who or what wants to hurt Don Hung, we won't let them. Those who dare attack members of the Astral Express should be prepared to suffer the wrath of me and Himiko. Did Himiko tell you about March 7th? Um, she was trapped in ice, floating through space. We happened upon her and rescued her. It was a unique type of ice known as six-phased ice, a substance that adheres to imaginary law, meaning that external forces cannot change its form. Whoever sealed her inside the six-phased ice, no matter who it is, did so either to protect her or banish her. I believe she had been floating through space for some time. It's impossible to trace the origins of this phenomenon. When it's observed by humans, or should I say, once it begins to affect the physical world, it's already too late to reverse. It's like a sudden storm that appears on a calm ocean. This phenomenon causes the smooth journey through the expanse to be filled with dangers. The mechanism whereby this mutation and corrosion spreads is the Stellarons. It promulgated rapidly like cancer cells, so the International Peace Corporation named it the Cancer of All Worlds. They are the army ruled by the Eon of Destruction, Nanook. As Nanook's followers, they stand against all life and civilization and execute the will of destruction, disseminating chaos and calamity. Their actions cannot be explained by reason because their only motivation and purpose is to destroy. Fragmentums are a phenomenon of corrosion. The mainstream school of thought is that Stellarons catalyzed the appearance of fragmentums. All matter and space that comes into contact with the fragmentum will be turned into fragmentum creations. However, you don't have to feel too burdened. At the very least, the current state of the Stellaron in your body is very stable and will not cause distortion to the outside.
back already? Did you get into some trouble? Already? Did you get it? woke up after being rescued from the ice, I could see clusters of stars in front of me. I reached out for them automatically, but they turned out to be the carriage ceiling lights. The whole crew was watching me. It was pretty embarrassing. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Before all this, I was stuck in a huge block of ice drifting through space. Himeko and Mr. Yang and... Who was it again? Anyway, they figured out a way to melt the ice and saved me. I don't remember a thing. Who I am, where I'm from, my name. It's like everything was erased from my mind. March 7th was the day they found me, so it stuck. Ever since then, I've been hanging out on this train and following it to whatever destination it decides to stop at. I'm hoping that one day, I can find my past. Uh, what am I talking about this for? A <laughs> way to get everyone down, huh? It's fine. I was the one who brought it up. <sighs> Cheer up! It's not every day someone gets to ride on the Astral Express. Ah, here comes the conductor. The Express has reached a safe distance from the space station. We'll be jumping in about... 10 minutes. Return to your seats, please. Both of you! Things could get bumpy. Uh, thanks, Pom Pom. But did you really have to come and remind me? I'm not a newbie, you know. Well, it wouldn't be necessary, but Miss March 7th likes to challenge herself. And falls over every time. That's just called never giving up. <laughs> Conductor, can I get a juice, please? Thank you! Uh, we're jumping in five minutes. You can have something to drink when it's over. But I'm thirsty now. Oh, don't worry about me. I just want to see if I can stay on my feet this time. Thanks. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it. The key is using your core, waist, and leg muscles. It's not your stance that matters, but your ability to ride the inertia. Well, don't mind me. Find a place to sit down and buckle up. Oh, don't worry about me. Hi, thanks. I feel like I'm the key is using your core, waist. Well, don't mind me. Find a place to sit down and buckle up. Oh, don't worry about me. Hi. It's fine. I'm sturdier than I look. Besides, the ice will protect me. 
When I'm in danger, I instinctively create ice to protect myself. Though, sometimes falling on the ice actually hurts more than falling on the ground. Well, don't mind me. Find a place to sit down and buckle up. Oh, don't worry about me. Don't be silly. This is fun. I like keeping busy. Otherwise, I start obsessing over pointless things. Well, don't mind me. Find a place to sit down and buckle up. Our next stop is a small planet called Eurelo 6. It's been thousands of years since the last time the Express paid a visit. The databank shows it was a lush and beautiful place. But after all this time, it's possible that dramatic changes have occurred. Jumps are like this. They may feel novel the first few times, but you'll slowly get used to them after a few more. As for the mechanism, well, if you're interested, I'll explain it to you in detail when we have more time. For now, just sit and wait. Remember to close your eyes. It helps with the dizziness. has become? Uh-huh. So, that snowy planet is our destination this time? Yes. Looks like this trailblazing expedition won't be easy. Oh, spatial readout anomaly. Star rail stability is down to 12%. Schedule alteration. Seven-day stopover time extended indefinitely. Hmm. The complex locality of this world has been affected somehow. The star rail has been blocked off by something. Take an ordinary train as an example. It's like the tracks up ahead have suddenly snapped, and the way forward leads straight into a collapsing abyss. The only sensible thing to do would be to break hard, right? If we try to force our way ahead, there could be a hefty price to pay. This again? Don't tell me. It's gotta be. The results of the preliminary analysis are here. The anomaly stems from a stellar run, as always. Yes, just like the one that's been placed into your body. Don't worry, it's not the first time our route has been obstructed by a Stellaron. Stellarons are clouded in mystery. Even Herta isn't able to fully understand them. But at least we know how to neutralize their influences. The only thing we can say for sure is that their arrival causes massive changes to civilizations and ecosystems. They also generate distortions in space, such as fragmentums. There must be an inextricable connection between the Stellaron we're dealing with here and Eurelo 6 becoming a frozen planet. Our current theory is that Stellarons are seeds of disaster, planted by a certain eon throughout the universe. We can't continue to trailblaze without removing the source of the disaster. We're all about. Pretty cool, huh? 
I'd like to entrust this trailblazing expedition to March, Dan Hung, and you. The objective is clear. Find the Stellaron responsible for the disaster and the spatial distortions, and bring it back to the Express. We'll deal with the rest. Awesome! We get to work as a team again! Because you three made a great team back in the space station. My guess is that if you spend even longer together, we'll see something even more impressive. So it's still not our turn. I know you really want to go, but we should give the youngsters a chance to get out there on their own. It'll be a good opportunity for them to bond. March, if you two are ready, why not go and find Dan Hung? He's probably already started collating the ecological data and survey results for your Relo 6. It's always good to know more about the destination before you start a journey. Ever since the destruction sowed Stellarons across the universe, many worlds have changed. Nanook the destruction, Yausha the abundance, Terminus the finality. I've seen and learned a lot in my time, but I still struggle to understand some of the Eon's actions. Thanks to a brilliant performance, you guys saved the space station from a moment of crisis. Now, the Express is relying on you to get it moving again. Remember, there are four things we do when we arrive at a new world. Explore, understand, establish, and connect. And I'm sure you'll get along really well with March and Dan Hung. A planet covered in snow and ice. Will I find my answer here? Whoa! <sighs> Don't sneak up on me like that. Why are you still here? Go find Don Hung. Exciting adventures are waiting for us. Each stop brings its own grand and exciting adventure. <sighs> no. Pom-Pom can't leave the train right now. Oh, Pom-Pom's so dejected all of a sudden. Each stop brings its own grand and exciting adventure. No. Pom-Pom can't leave the train right now. Oh, Pom-Pom's so dejected all of a sudden. Are you doing okay after your first jump? Dizziness or retching are normal reactions. You'll feel better once you get used to it. Hmm, so you have high compatibility with the Express. That's good. I went through the Express's database, and it seems the environment on Urelo 6 has undergone drastic changes in the past few centuries. It was not a frozen planet to begin with. He said so? Hmm. Considering the spatial obstacles that the Star Rail has encountered, it's highly possible. I've conducted a preliminary survey and found that there's one area with a relatively normal temperature on the surface of the planet. By normal, I mean a temperature that just about allows for human survival. If I had to choose a site for initial investigation on this trailblazing expedition, that would be it. As I expected. Before you came, whenever March wanted to go anywhere, Himiko would make Mr. Yang and me go with her. And even after you arrived, I didn't suppose I'd be the one to be... liberated of that duty. I assume the trailblazing objective this time is to find the Stellaron on Urelo 6 and dispel the effect it's exerting on the Star Rail. Right? I see. 
You should find March. I'll join you two once I'm ready. I see. Did you talk to Don Hung? How'd it go? <sighs> That's our Don Hung. Always trying to look cool with his poker face. Don't mind him. Relax. Don Hung and I are experienced trailblazers. We got your back. Well, are you ready? When I first saw this planet, I thought a world covered in ice. Could it have something to do with my past? Now I can't stop thinking about it. Still, the ice that trapped me was six-phased ice, a very rare substance. I don't think you can find it on your average planet. To be honest, I think I'd be kind of annoyed if I found out this was my home world. It looks freezing. Pretty girls aren't frost resistant. What? Is there something on my face? Nah, I was just imagining all the fun we're gonna have here. <laughs> uh, I feel sorry for this world. First the Stellaron, and now you. All right, here comes the Eurelo 6 Trailblaze team. <laughs> 